Malusi Kikaba steps up to the plate, outlining the direction South Africa is likely to take towards an inclusive economy. But how do we get there when growth is almost non-existent and debt is galloping out of control? The Politburo is now in session. My name is Tulasis Wesimelane. We'd love to hear from you, so send us your WhatsApp video comments to the number 082-884-6370. Please send those videos throughout the week so we can have time to edit and slot them into the Sunday morning discussion. In the Politburo today, Vets University academic Lumgi Lemondi and political economist Sia Biniza. Well, if you are familiar with the sport of boxing, you'll know the concept of being up against the ropes. You know that moment when one fighter sees his opponent on the brink of falling and decides to land as many punches as possible to expedite the end of the match? Well, some would say Malusi Kikaba's maiden budget speech since becoming finance minister in April had a bit of that feel. And this is how the reign of body blows were delivered. The 2017 budget projected GDP growth of 1.3% in 2017 is being revised downwards to 0.7%. We forecast growth of 1.1% in 2018 and 1.5% in 2019. Due to lower than expected economic growth this year, gross tax revenue for 2017-2018 is projected to be at 50.8 billion rand, lower than projected in the budget. The consolidated budget deficit will widen to 4.3% of GDP in 2017-18 against a 2017 budget of target of 3.1% of GDP. Gross national debt is projected to reach 61% of GDP by 2022 with debt service costs approaching 15% of main budget revenue by 2020-2021. Well, predictably, the opposition were unimpressed, and that's to put it mildly. We'll be spending 224.3 billion rand on debt service costs, which is 120 billion rand more than we will be spending on policing this year, and 45 billion rand more than we will be spending on social protection, particularly social grants this year. Uh, and so uh, it really is, um, I think, a reflection of uh, the catastrophic mismanagement of this economy by President Jacob Zuma. It's a very depressing, uh, 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 what do you call it, maiden speech. Eh? It's a very depressing one. You see, the fact that he announces that he is going to add more money to the money that we are losing through uh, SAA and, uh, and ESCOM uh, it just doesn't give anybody hope. How do you take good money? and throw it in the hole. That is, it's, it's an old hole. You, you come there, the hole is there, the money is going down. There was nothing concrete to say how do we turn the economy around. For example, you've seen the debt levels. They are shocking. It means we're in trouble. But in so far as the fight against corruption and, and reducing waste, wasteful expenditure in the system, he has much credibility as a cat that decides to say it's going to conduct a commission of inquiry into the disappearance of mice. I mean, his entire government is sitting with that credibility problem. Sia, well, you heard for yourself there, Malusi Kigaba, um, outlining just how bad the situation is. But in terms of then giving confidence to South Africans and to, you know, the other members of his audience, how do you think he did? I think the minister performed very poorly in terms of reinvigorating confidence. And I think um, in as much as he was very realistic and he was uh, very forthright in terms of the current situation in the economy, he wasn't very outright in terms of what is the plan to actually resuscitate economic growth. Um, besides looking at reducing the reserves, contingency reserves, and also reducing the budgeting for reserves in the budget to finance some of the gaps that are in other SOEs that are mismanaged, etc., he hasn't actually gone and given anything radical and we would have liked to see how he's going to deal I mean hand in hand obviously with the Department of Public Enterprises on this public financial mismanagement which is actually creating and worsening the situation economically. Do you share that view Lumkile? Uh, uh, absolutely. Mm. Um, we have a state uh, that has continued uh, to lose a lot of money if we read the Auditor General's uh, reports. 
So neither the Public Finance Management Act nor any uh, of the ministers uh, or even the teachers that manage this money that the minister was presenting uh, on Wednesday. So therefore, you know, up until the system holds everyone accountable, whatever uh, beautiful speeches and nice budget is put on the table is going to be, uh, is not going to be trusted at all. So I think the story, one of the main stories that comes out of this budget has to do with uh, our debt levels. You saw the, the reaction of the opposition parties. Yeah, let me ask you, um, are, you are, are we at a point where we should be concerned? I mean, the minister talked about us reaching about 61% uh, of GDP, that uh, debt to GDP ratio by 2022. Should we be concerned that we may soon have to approach the IMF? Yeah. Look, I think the, the, the listeners and viewers obviously need to understand that countries don't pay off their debts. You know, countries' debts, uh, you grow out of them. So what we're currently facing is rising debt. At the same time, our GDP growth is very stagnant. So this doesn't create a, you know, convincing uh, image to the you know, international financial markets as to whether South Africa can actually meet its obligation because the growth is too slow in order to pay back some of the loans that we've borrowed. And you've already started to see this in terms of the relative proportion of the paying back for loans in proportion to what government budgets are for different departments. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, Lumgile, in the, in the statement, in the, uh, in the speech that the minister delivered, there's a line there that talked about uh, the debt servicing costs. The quote is squeezing out, uh, uh, you know, what government can, can spend on social services. Yes. What's important here, we need a quote story. We know that the minister's hands have been cut because... Uh, ministers one in the minerals department, Minister Davies uh, in the training industry. That is where microeconomic reforms have to happen. That's where the growth has to happen. So to an extent that can deliver this budget, when M Mr. Zwane goes on a tangent to destroy the backbone of South Africa's export ANA, uh, where rural development and jobs are being created or being lost in, the, in his policies now. That's where the problem is. And, and he said he can, he can intervene and become a mediator in that conflict. Instead of holding uh, these ministers to account that why are you making my work difficult? Act in the interest of the country. Let's create those jobs. Let's reinvigorate industry and bring confidence. So I think shame. I feel sorry for him because he's got no power at all. He, he can continue doing this as long as Minister Zwane, Minister uh, Davies and many others continue in these sectors doing whatever they can. The growth story is going to slowly disappear. 0.7% will look very, very good. So the, the budget is partly about, you know, achieving your political objectives, um, also your developmental objectives, as much as you are paying attention to the technicalities of what the state of the economy is. In that context, then, Sia, let me ask you, where do we stand on something like the National Development Plan, then, given what we are seeing? Is that even something that we can even consider to uh, continue to consider to be our, um, our main vision? Look, we have a funny joke about it, but it's not a laughing matter. It's a serious concern. Um, I mean, if you look at the growth projections that we need to reach for the NDP, 5%, 5.3%, we're currently downgraded our expectation to 0.7%. And, you know, uh, but my biggest other concern is the alignment, obviously, between the fiscal policy and monetary policy. So firstly, in the, monetary, in the fiscal policy itself, when growth is very slow, any economist will tell you that what is needed is government to ratchet up its expenditure in order to boost up demand. But because of the rising debt and the continued slow growth, we don't have a lot of fiscal space to actually boost up domestic demand. And then the other part there where, where we are spending in terms of public expenditure, the expenditure is inefficient. So Minister Gigaba is forced now to implement austerity in a time when we actually need government expenditure to boost up uh, demand. But the other side of the coin is that the monetary policy now is expected to go on to a, a, a rising interest rate cycle simply because the U.S. in September announced that it's going to be ra it's going to be ramping up its interest rates, which means that in order to attract foreign investors to South Africa, we need to increase our interest rates so that we can meet a parity in terms of returns for investors. Otherwise, they'll end up investing in the U.S. So, you know, the divergence in terms of the economic policy sure. and the reality on the ground is quite challenging, and we need more accommodative policy. NDP is the one acronym. The other is RET, Radical Economic Transformation. 
Information. Lumgile, the minister spoke about uh, stimulating small business uh, growth and also uh, the, the, using the procurement uh, spend of government to sort of help with that. Is that something that continues to be a realistic uh, objective, radical economic transformation or inclusive growth, as, you know, as some would, would call it? So, uh, radical economic transformation is a populist term uh, for failure. So you failed, so you're trying to make people believe that you failed because of an enemy, a Western um, supported enemy. What we do know, what uh, government, including Mr. Keba, knows very, very well, is that actually we plan in the dark. We have stats SA where uh, people like Paddy Luhota have shown us where we are. So 30 million South Africans live under 1,000 rand uh, uh, per month. We have many South Africans uh, over, uh, over about, um, um, about, eight, uh, about uh, 73 percent unemployed. Um, poverty inequality is widening. So we know that. So that should be the basis of how to get out of the hole. How to make for those students that are teaching, that are coming into the varsity, how to ensure that at least 80% of them go to labor market. So you cannot talk radical economic transformation without locating mm. it in the diagnosis. So the diagnosis is wrong. The diagnosis is populist. Uh, it's to appease those voters who are disillusioned. All right. The issue should focus on what's re what the data tells us. We build on that and what's needed. Let's hold it there for a moment. After the break, we are, uh, where are our spending priorities in these tough economic times? And can we really afford to splurge on nuclear energy?